Hello children, welcome to grade 7 ICT lesson. Today we are going to talk about the first unit that is the central processing unit. By studying this lesson you will be able to explain the components of a CPU and their functions, identifies the landmarks of CPU development, identifies the changes of processor speed and other features. Do you remember the functions of a computer that we learned in grade 6? There we will talk about input, process and output. When we talk about process function, we are told to process every input we give to the computer to get an output. We also learn that our system unit performs this function called process. So my dear students, today we are going to talk more details about this process function. Well, first let's take a small example. We have heard in a hotel or a restaurant, the cooking is done in the kitchen. Then who does this cooking? We call him chef. This computer is like the kitchen of a restaurant. Then the central processing unit inside our computer is like the chef working in this kitchen or we call it the processor. Then where is this central processing unit in a computer? We have learned about a part called the system unit inside of which we can see the central processing unit. Then we now know that the central processing unit is not something we can see outside the computer. After removing the part of this side of the system unit, we see a board like a tray which we call the motherboard. And inside that we can see the central processing unit. Let us now see what this central processing unit does. The chef takes what is in the kitchen and prepares the food. The central processing unit takes the inputs we give and processes according to the instructions given and gives an output. When we turn on our computer, we will be assigning various tasks to the computer. That is when the CPU starts working. CPU works according to the instructions given by the program. We can also call the CPU the brain of the computer. But children remember, this brain cannot work on its own. It is possible to work according to the instructions we give. Now, we know the central processing unit does not have the ability to think and work on its own like our brain. There are many different processors can be found in the market. But there are two major leading manufacturers of processors can be named in terms of speed and the quality. They are called as Intel and Advanced Micro Devices, also known as AMD. Well, now let's see what are the other parts inside the CPU. The CPU can be divided into three main parts. The first is the Arithmetic and Logical Unit, ALU. The second part is the Control Unit, CU. The third part is called memory registers, MR. Let us now learn more about these three parts. What does this arithmetic and logical unit do? We use this unit for mathematical and logical work. Let's say we need to do a calculation. You have learned about addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. Also, compare your marks in exam with your friend's marks. Here we can use the arithmetic and logical unit to do these things. 
Let's discuss this with an example. Below is a brief description of a student's marks in three subjects in a school term test. The teacher wants to collect the total marks of these students. So teacher will add the marks obtained for all the three subjects. What is the answer? It is 220. Now she wants to find the rank in the class so she has to find the average of the students marks. How to do it? The sum of the total marks which is 220 is divided by 3. Then we get the answer as 73.33. So what are the arithmetic operations we performed here? Addition and division. Let's see how to do a logical or comparison. There is a student who obtained 70 marks and the other student got 85 for their ICT exam. We have to compare the marks of the two to see who got the highest marks. Now we can say that the student who got 85 got more marks than 70 marks. So, ALU is useful for us to do the above mentioned activities. Now, let's see what the control unit does. When we do some work, someone has to be there to see if we are doing it right, if we are getting the right data from the right place and if we have delivered it to the right place. We call this controlling. So this control is done by the control unit in our processor. We use input device to enter inputs to the computer and we use output devices to get an output. Between these devices must have a good connection. Also the input should be given to the output device correctly. Doing these things with good control and there should be good communication between them. All of these things are done by our control unit. This arithmetic logic or execution part is done by the arithmetic and logical unit and gives us the output we need and the control unit control these things, whatever we do. We need to save it or keep it in our mind. Now let's see who remembers these things. We send inputs into the processor for a short time. In that short time, our data and instructions need to be stored temporarily until information is sent to the output device or storage device after processing. That is what we use for memory registers. This is a very small unit compared to other memory devices like hard disk and its speed is very high. Speed of the CPU. What do we remember when we say speed? Doesn't that mean running fast or working fast? So let's see why does computer processor needs this speed. Once we have paid a big amount and brought a computer at home, we hope to get our work done quickly. So, we hope to process the data we provide and provide us with information as soon as possible, right? But otherwise, we say this is a very slow computer. As an example, Someone says he can finish reading 10 pages of a book in 5 minutes. Another says that he can finish reading 10 pages of a book in less than 3 minutes. So we like someone who works short hours, right? So now we understand how important this speed is to a computer processor. So looking at how much work, which means instructions, the processor does in a given time is called speed of the computer. We also call this clock speed. 
usually we talk in seconds and there are smaller parts like milliseconds and etc. The smallest unit that measures the speed is the hertz. So the units for measuring the speed are megahertz and gigahertz. Let us now look at a summary of the clock speed we talked about earlier. We now know how to measure distance in kilometers, meters. Similarly, we take this thousand unit here and measure the speed. So we know that hertz is the smallest unit used to measure the speed. Thousand hertz is equal to one kilohertz. 1000 kilohertz is equal to 1 megahertz, 1000 megahertz is equal to 1 gigahertz. So this is how we talk about the main part of the computer, the CPU or the processor and its component and their functions. I hope the lesson is clear to you. So that's it for today. See you in another lesson. Thank you. Have a nice day.